Now one good thing about probability theory is it says that there is certain probability with which everything will happen. So whatever you are trying to do, you will definitely be able to achieve it with certain probability. And if you want to increase the probability of success, later I will show you with some examples that if you increase the number of attempts, even the probability of success will increase. Okay, so anyway, in order to understand this theory, probability theory, you are supposed to understand uh, certain terms. So first, what I'll do is I'll try to introduce you to the terminology that we are going to use in this subject, and then using examples, I'll make the concepts clear. So in this in this particular uh, subject, instead of talking about the theory, even though it is probability theory, we'll be talking mainly about the examples and then using the examples i'll explain you all the concepts it is not that you know i'm going to give you just the definitions the definitions are never useful in this subject we'll just stick to as many problems as we can only the problems okay so first let's talk about the basic terms which will be useful in this so one basic term that will be useful in, in defining anything here is random experiment so what is a random experiment is For example, if you take a coin and if you if you toss it, the outcome may be head or tail. But what it is exactly going to be, we don't know. Right? You can you can term such an experiment as random experiment. So what an ex random experiment is in simple words, we'll be knowing set of all possible outcomes, but we don't know in you know in advance what is the outcome we might get that is called as random experiment and all the events that might occur are equally likely okay so what is the random experiment we know all the set of outcomes but we don't know what is the outcome that will that will come in advance it is just like you know tossing a coin so for example one example i'm just taking just few examples right so for example tossing a coin is a random experiment right and similarly you can think of dice rolling a dice rolling a dice is a random example a random experiment right and similarly you can think about picking an object from a collection picking an object from a collection without looking at it for example if you have a basket in which we have 10 red balls and 10 white balls and if you are trying to pick one of them without looking at them then we don't know which ball we might pick up right so that is nothing but a random experiment but we know that we will get either a red ball or a white ball which means we know the set of outcomes but we don't know exactly which one we are going to get as the outcome of that particular you know that instance of the experiment that is called as random experiment and after knowing about random experiment the next thing is for each random experiment we'll have something called as sample space sample space so what is the sample space is set of all possible outcomes of an experiment is called as sample space for example if you say that uh, you know experiment is about uh, tossing a coin then what is set of all possible uh, outcomes then sample space is nothing but either you will get a head or you will get a tail right so why are we doing this all this is this is convention that is these are the conventions that we follow so that later when you are talking about uh, you know some uh, some problem even the questionnaire he will ask to use the same terminology and also we will understand what is what do you mean what do they mean by sample space and all so it is better that you know all of this now and then sometimes they will say that instead of using this sample space they will use the name sample set right or they will use the name domain space something like this but then they are going to uh, explain you so in most of the textbooks they are using this term sample space Mo most of the textbooks let us say you are trying to uh, roll a dice then if you are told you are trying to roll a die single die then how many outcomes are possible one two three four five six isn't it now let us say you are trying to toss two coins then how many outcomes are possible so when you are trying to toss two coins now the outcome could be either head head or head tail or tail head or 
tail tail similarly if you are trying to uh, roll two dice then outcomes will be uh, one die is going to give you uh, you know six out outputs and other die is also going to give you six outputs so six into six is going to be 36 if you try to roll two dice at the same time then we may get 36 outputs right one 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 two one three one four one five one six so on till six six 36 outcomes we will see and and if you observe this these are all countable number right for example here if you are seeing it it is nothing but a countable set countable set countable set countable set and the events are discrete points which means we have head and tail two points right and six points like that but sometimes we might even have a continuous sample set what is a continuous sample set is let us say the experiment is about finding out the lifetime of a car now when you buy a car how many years is it going to last it might it might immediately be you know it fail immediately and it will not run it, it doesn't happen in the real world but still so it might have zero lifetime or one year or two year or it might last forever isn't it just an assumption nothing will last forever but in you know in this theory we can go about like that i'm just giving an example so in that case the lifetime of a car let's say s5 is the sample space for the experiment where we are trying to find out the lifetime of a car now lifetime of a car can be zero or it can go to until infinity it can be any number from zero to infinity got it so simple see let's keep the thing simple what is random experiment we know set of all outputs but we don't know which output will be the uh, you know next output that we don't know that is a random experiment and what is the sample space it is set see again sample space is nothing but a set this important this word is important why is it important i'll tell you sample space is set of all possible outcomes right and th this is an example and the next thing is we define something called as an event event an event is nothing but any subset of the sample space is an event for example if you are tossing one die there can be an event you are interested in event of getting heads then you can define the event as h right see this if the sample space is head and tails and if you are interested in knowing about the event of getting heads then we define the event e as h and if you if you see this even is a subset of s1 which means once you define the sample space then we define the event as a subset of the sample space right and what about uh, if you are trying to roll dice if you are trying to roll a die then maybe if you are interested in getting an odd number or even number that is an event so for example e2 which is a subset of s2 because we are now interested in rolling a dice that is the experiment and this is the sample space and now my event of interest is getting an even number right it has to be a subset of this so what is even number two uh, four six so e2 is a subset of s2 which is called as an event and similarly let's talk about uh, this one let us say we are trying to uh, toss two coins we are trying to flip two coins and now uh, while flipping these two coins i want to know about the event in which i'll get at least one head then what will be that event let's call it e3 which should be a subset of s3 right and now let's say i want at least one head so how can i define it so hh -h will contain at least one head or head tail which means see this is head on first coin and head on second coin this is head on first coin and tail on second coin or tail on first coin and head on second coin so this is the event in which i have at least one head right so that is how you can define it now when you are when you are rolling two dice let's say i want to find out all the events in which uh, the sum is a odd number right or let's say the sum is equal to three so what are all the uh, outcomes 
that will result in a sum 2 so when I'm dying to, when I'm uh, rolling two dice so if the sum has to be 3 one die has to give me 1 and the other die has to give me 2 or one die has to give me 2 and the other die has to give me 1 so these are the two uh, so, you know points that we have to have in this event and again if you see this e4 is a subset of s4 and similarly when you are trying to find out the lifetime of a car let's say i am interested in the event where the car's lifetime is at least six and at most three uh, at least three and at most six years like this three comma six so this is actually a subset of this so again it is an event so what is it we defined a random experiment and then we defined a sample space and then we defined a event that is what we did and now if you again see this one important interesting thing here is event is also a set even though it is a subset it is still a set so what is sample space it is a set and what is event it is a set therefore we are going to apply all the things that we have learned for sets again here so for example we might apply union of two sets we might apply intersection of two sets and we might apply complement of a set right so which means like this see now let's say we have defined an event s1 is the sample space and we have defined an event of uh, getting a head as this and an event of well, let's say e6 getting a tail as this <coughs> now what is e1 union e6 e1 union is e6 is nothing but either this or this which is head comma tail right what about even intersection e2 right so if you think about these two events and if I, if I take the intersection there is nothing in common then we call it as a null set represent with phi now the interesting point about this phi is whenever you have two events in such a way that their intersection is phi then they are called as mutually exclusive events mutually exclusive means nothing in common they are called as mutually exclusive events right so don't get uh, confused with the term independent events and mutual exclusive events independent events are completely different people generally think that if the thing is common then they are independent no no it is not that way so independent events are completely different which we'll see later but for now stick here to uh, mutual exclusive events what is mutual exclusive if you are having nothing in intersection then they are called as mutual exclusive events just like mutual exclusive sets right and and similarly you can define complement of a event for example if you see even complement if you say this even complement is nothing but s minus e where s is the sub uh, this is sample space and even is the set so what does it mean even complement is nothing but set of all uh, points in the sample space that are not in e1 right for example if you are having a sample space as s2 right and the event e2 is defined on it now what is e2 it is set of all even numbers isn't it which are possible on rolling a die now if i say e2 complement now what does it mean from the sample space s2 you remove the points which are present in e2 then whatever are remaining then we are going to use them so what are remaining 1 3 5 so this is nothing but set of all odd numbers right so e2 if it is containing set of all even numbers then e2 complement is going to contain set of all odd numbers right so just just try to understand all these concepts now these concepts are going to be used throughout this theory throughout the probability theory i'm going to use what is the sample space what is the event right and then the next part is how to apply or how to assign some numbers which are called as probabilities to the events right how to apply the probability for the sample space and how to apply some numbers to the events that we'll see now okay Hi. if you have planned to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of one lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the iits put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5 percent and IITs 
universities better than IITs. They have very good acceptance rate, like 30 percent, 40 percent. But all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5 percent. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177, and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your masters in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply. And statement of purpose building. And then LOR guidance. And GRE and English test assistance. And education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral, which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days. And whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting a, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews, and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join game of visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia. Canada. So we guide we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494554454. Okay, thank you.